I've still got lots and lots of things in containers outside that are desperate to be moved on into a larger pot or even put in ground outside. So that's what we're concentrating on as we start off June. And we're also going to be looking at taking harvests from various things around the garden that we planted quite early. And in one instance, things that were planted last year. And one of those things was container garlic. And all we did was buy a bulb of garlic from supermarket and we just split it off and I just planted the cloves into a very small container. And you just bury them an inch deep and leave them to it. It's that easy to grow garlic. And you never know if you're gonna get anything from store-bought stuff. But I have done it in past and we have had something. Albeit small bulbs, it's still something. And we had to do nothing to that container except bury the cloves and leave it be. We're gonna pop down to that container garden. I'm gonna grab this container of garlic that we've been growing for months. And we'll have a dig in, see what we can find. And that's gonna be our very first garlic reveal. And the reason we like any kind of a reveal is because you never know what you're gonna get. So I'll pop down, grab that container, and we'll take a look. They say that when you're growing garlic, the leaves die back. And you're supposed to wait until about five or six leaves have died back, or the stems are starting to discolour. They don't always fall over like onions do, because you get different types of garlic. You get soft neck ones and you get hard neck ones. And I don't even know what type these are really. And the reason I don't know is because I just bought a bulb from a supermarket and then separated it into its cloves and we just put a few cloves into this and that was in winter last year. But we have left some of these way too long. But there's one thing we can do. We can have a little dig in it and see if we actually got anything from that store-bought garlic. So I'm gonna have a rummage. When you harvest your garlic, you need to dig it out. Don't pull it out because you'll just break the tops off. So I'll see if I can get in here around edges and get any of these bulbs out, if we've got any bulbs. I'm not expecting a lot, but they can be quite tough to get out. So we've got something there it's only it's only really small but it is a garlic bulb i'm just going to take these roots away from bottom but we've definitely got cloves of garlic in there you can feel them but we need to dry these out as well so you get that crispy papery texture to outside of your bulb so we'll just leave them in here for that to happen. Another thing about harvesting your garlic, if you've decided it is ready for harvest, leave it for a week completely unwatered and that'll help that papery substance dry on your bulbs. I think what I'm going to do is, is just take all these out. I think they've gone a lot longer than they should have done. But like I said, they can be, considering they're in a little container, they get quite wedged in there. And you can see how old that stem is now. And that has actually got a really strong smell of garlic. And we love smell of garlic. So I'll just knock that off. And that one is a bit more bulky. You can see that we've got a nice clove of garlic there. I think this is the first time I've done a garlic reveal, but there is a first time for everything. You'll get used to that as season goes on. So let's dig another one out. I'm hoping that these two that are still upright with green leaves on top are gonna to be a little bit bigger. But we're still on the ones that have completely died back at the moment. So let's get these off. I grew some of these last year or the year before, I'm not sure which. And again, they were from shop bought garlic cloves. And we got round about the same size. But we dried all those out and then I put them all in the fridge. 
and it was really strong garlic really nice and the cloves lasted ages and once again we did about six cloves in a little container so it didn't take up any space it was basically zero maintenance you just plant them and wait and they'll stand all the way through autumn and winter and then round about this time of year you can start harvesting them and then you can sow some more but yeah we're, we're pretty much getting consistency in bulb size at the moment I'm actually quite pleased at what we're getting out of this container considering there was no expense and no effort involved now we move on to these last two so we're hoping for something a bit better but it could also be a case of the variety only grows to a certain size I'm not one that grows garlic all the time so I'll try not to pull this out I'm digging below those roots and trying to break them away at the same time let's have a look at what we've got here well we've got a lot of roots it is a bit bigger than the other ones we've had it's not massive but that's not always important when we use garlic we don't use a lot of garlic it stores really well and if it's strong like these are that's all for the better so these weren't really going to grow any bigger anyway so we'll, we need to hang these like I said we'll dry them out and then I'll cut these tops off last one let's see what we got and then we can reuse this container I'll just take out all the roots we did lose one plant during this process and there's no trace of it left so I must have pulled it out we ended up with five out of six that's a pretty good average so let's have a look at this last one again plenty for roots check away all that excess compost get rid of those roots and this is actually on average with the first ones that we got quite a small bulb but all in all for the space it's took up and the fact that we didn't have to put any work into it We've got quite a few bulbs of garlic there. An average of maybe four cloves per bulb at a decent size. So, 20 cloves of garlic for very little work. I think that's a good result. And we're gonna recycle all this compost. I'll tip it out into a sieve and we'll get any stones out and then we'll reuse it and add a bit of fertilizer to amend that because we know most of the nutrients have been taken out of this now but we're trying not to waste anything early in june and we've had another little reveal and i can't wait for these potato reveals because they always seem to be a highlight of every gardener's year fingers crossed open there's no slug damage or scab or anything like that that we get some decent size very clean potatoes which is a very good reason why we always do them in containers now because it'll cut down on the amount of pest damage that you're going to get and wind damage as well you can also control the watering a little bit better now that's done i'll crack on with another job this afternoon and i think what we're going to be doing is planting a couple of these things in background that's in really small packs and giving them a better chance of growing because the warmer it gets the faster things are going to grow but also the faster they're going to dry out if they're in very small containers. So this week, that is our priority to move on anything that's still in relatively small containers. If you want to see exactly what we're going to be moving over the weekend, please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and we look forward to seeing you then. Take care.